If you are listening to this podcast, it means you're searching, searching for someone who understands you, someone who gets you. You are yearning to be understood and to belong. Welcome to the Someone Gets Me podcast, where we help smart, talented, and sensitive people navigate an often insensitive world. I am Diane Allen, your host. My roles as ambassador, author, speaker, and intuitive mentor for bright and talented people are woven into each episode. I have the experience and knowledge to educate and inspire as I have been there and I understand your unique intensities, sensitivities, and challenges. Welcome. How much is too much? Hi, friends. It's Diane here, and I want to talk about too much. Now, as bright and sensitive, gifted people and living in a world that has a lot of chaos and turmoil, then sometimes there's too much. And for me, it's kind of like a cross between the old school pinball machines that said tilt or completely shut down sometimes or so many things happening that there's an overwhelm of too much. So I've been asking the question of myself and some of the people I work with and some colleagues, well, how much is too much? How much is too much electronics? You know, how much screen time and constant input moving fast, um, going on different places to get your dopamine hit and, and all of those things. Like how much of that is too much for your sensitive self or for, anybody. And then I wonder also about the stimulation in the world, you know, the colors and headlights are getting brighter and colors are getting brighter and commercials are louder than the other programming. All of those things, the constant stimulation, never a break. In fact, I have some people I work with that I say, oh, you should go to a float tank or go sit quietly in nature, like without your phone and just listen to the birds. And they look at me, some people in fear and terror, like they would not know what to do if there wasn't some form of constant noise. And I think it's easy to be overstimulated. I think it's easy to go into machine mode as a gifted person and keep going, 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 going until we burn ourselves up. And so how fast is too fast? You know, I... I and many of the people I work with, we get a lot done in a very short period of time and other people might take longer. So then pretty soon, some corporate environments and business worlds and even some families, but mostly I see this in business worlds where that person who can deliver faster gets more to do. And so they keep going at that pace like a machine and other people begin to consciously or unconsciously take advantage of it. You have one client that I that I'm working with now that she is she's paying attention to that pacing and that timing of things, because if you can deliver a project uh, half the time, maybe of what other people on the team can do, and you keep doing that consistently, you'll get twice as much work because there'll be that perception of open time, that perception that it's easy. But what people don't understand is that living in a brain that's um, gifted and living in a world that way, we may be able to do things faster or more on point or whatever it is, but it comes at a price. There's a big price to that. So we're, we're going to get to that in a minute. And so I think these things really matter. Um, there's that constant feeling of being on call, having to be ready, that sense of urgency often. And when we're overstimulated and there's more and more things going on and the, the pace we're expected to go in is not friendly to the human heart and essence and being, we can get ourselves in trouble. So yes, our brains can go really fast, but we're not machines. One of the big lessons that I work with my people on is the whole idea of integration of integrating what we learn and what we see and what we know and what we feel into a life that works, into our system, into our paradigm. Because we can keep learning and learning and learning, but if we don't allow it to integrate 
into our paradigm of living. If we don't allow the things we learn to take their place in our world, wherever that might be, then simply all we're doing is being like a computer and regurgitating information. Then we become lopsided. Overly heavy on the cognitive linear thinking information. And so we end up with atrophy of the heart, with bankruptcy of the spiritual connection. And those things can create major issues for people. So I think there's some ways to handle this. Um, So I want to ask you some questions here. Do you ever have burnout? Do you ever say, I'm tired, I've had enough, or I don't want to do this anymore? And you can feel that heaviness in your in your heart, in your chest area, where sometimes even breathing feels a little hard because you're just tired. Do you ever have decision fatigue? Decision fatigue is when you make so many decisions during the course of the day and your corpus callosum is working, you're going from creative to linear to creative to linear and back and forth so much that by the end of the day, you have a real difficult time making any decision. In fact, people who have chronic overeating, that's when they overeat as their decision fatigue sets in. And then there's compassion fatigue. That's for all of us empaths who feel everything and can also think our way through it all. And so sooner or later, we care so much, so deeply, so often that we can become fatigued on the inside. Now, you notice I'm not saying tired, I'm saying fatigued. And that fatigue is a deeper part of us that's just so spent. And then, of course, there's uh, what I call, anyway, empath distress disorder, which is where the empaths, especially I have lots of them that I work with, that give so much And they're free flow giving and they're living by the higher principle and they're giving, giving, feeling, giving that they end up creating a distressful situation in their own life. They create maybe their own depression or most often it's digestion issues or heart issues or something happens that's off off balance. That's cattywampus, if you will. And it's that empathic stress disorder because being an empath and giving their energy away and and feeling into other people's situations is um, getting in their body. And so they're paying the price unless they know how to, to not take it in, right? You can serve people and help people and be with people fully present and still not take on the issue. In fact, I have somebody that I'm working with now who, when I very far first started working with her, said, I just take on all my people's things. I take on all of their pain. And I, uh, in a velvet sledgehammer kind of way, said, you don't want to do that. Now, we're trained to do that, but we don't want to do that. We want to be with the person fully present, fully there, but taking on their pains, like putting our hand on them and sucking it out of them. And now we are bearing the burden and we don't want to do that. So it's so important to really pay attention to how much is too much for each of us, right? So while we're in the midst of the stressor or the event or the thing, the work, we're really good. We're fast thinking. We can handle things. We go, 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 and we can do it. But there's a price. And so when things slow down, we might get physically sick, might get a cold or laryngitis, or maybe we'll just feel so tired we can't get up, or maybe we'll have anxiety or depression, or maybe we'll we'll come up with another thing that we end up having. Because our immune system cannot keep up because we're not machines. It's so important for us to remember that. That when the occasion happens that we need to rise to the occasion, we're the first ones to do it. And that's wonderful. But what do you do to take care of yourself afterwards? So it's not during the crisis that I'm concerned about the gifted people I know. It's after that, two or three days after that, when the system starts to settle down. And all the consequence and all that energy rush from the being in the moment shows up. What are you going to do? We want to learn how to breathe and slow down. So too much is a little bit different for all of us. But what I see when I look around the world right now is a pace that we as human beings are expected to continue to grow and learn and perform is unreasonable. 
It's unreasonable to think that we need to push, push, push all the time, constantly. I see so many people who call themselves coaches and things like that. And all they're talking about is how much money can you make and how hard can you work to make a lot of money while you're helping people. And in my world, that's backwards. If you're truly a helper and you're truly somebody who's there stepping into the role of serving another person, money is not the motivator. The service is the motivator. The money is the consequence. It's the energy exchange, but it's not the motivator. And so I see so many people touting, you know, that I had a hundred thousand dollar month or $25,000 week or whatever it is. And if that's how you're measuring your success in my world, you're off base. What is important is how you make someone feel. What is important is somebody awakening to their true essence. Because what if somebody does not define their life by dollars? I don't define my, myself and my life by dollars. In fact, it's funny because I work someplace and the owner said, I'll give you X number of dollars if you get this person to stay. Well, first of all, trying to convince somebody to stay in inpatient treatment so that I get a bonus in my mind is wrong. Okay. So in addition to that, my only response was money is not my motivator. The motivator I have for serving the people that I help and serve is the smile they get on their face when the epiphanies happen and they're free from that inner bondage they were carrying around. It's the goodness that that person gets to take with them moving forward. I just got an email the other day from somebody I helped 23 years ago thanking me for being that person to help turn her around. So that's what matters to me, not the dollar signs. The dollar signs come as a consequence of good work, of caring deeply for others without putting my own um, measurement based on dollars in front. My measurement is based on how am I serving and are the people that I'm working with feeling more empowered and more alive and more able to step into who they are in their sovereignty? So when we have too much stimulation, too much electronics, too fast moving of a society, we have to learn how to slow it down. We have to learn how to take breaks. We have to learn how to moderate these things as highly motivated, but yet very intensely sensitive people. So it's a yes and balance, right? It's yes, we're smart and can think and do things. That's brilliant. And at the very same time, what are you doing to care for your heart center? What are you doing to not have atrophy of the heart? What are you doing to not have spiritual bankruptcy? And spiritual bankruptcy is when you lose track of who you are and what your mission is. It's not, I'm not talking religion. I'm talking spiritual bankruptcy. Spirituality is our connection to the greater of this universe. To go outside and be able to see the stars and experience the elegant simplicity of the natural world that we are a part of. And how connected are you to that? And a lot of people are not connected to it because we've been so pulled away from that part of our lives over time. And gifted people are overly rewarded for our brain function. So some people are walking around like brains on a stick. Like, how does your heart feel when I ask? They look at me like I'm goofy. They don't know how to answer. But it matters. Because too much too fast yields a mess. Too much too fast burns out the brightest genius there is. Too much too fast over a long period of time ends up killing the creativity of the very people who have the creativity to solve some of the complex issues facing humanity today. So what are you doing? What are you doing to moderate the constant barraging of information and stuff? Are you inviting more in and trying to keep up that ridiculous pace of being like a machine and leaving behind your spirit and your heart? Or are you one of those people who's starting to wake up or maybe already woke up to the fact that there's more to you than your brain and that there's more to life itself by being more balanced and standing in alignment with our integrity? Those are the important things, at least in my world. 
So I I want you to ask yourselves how much is too much. So maybe between this episode and next week, maybe think about it. Think about as you go through your day, is this too much? Is that too much? Is the noise too much? If it is, turn it down. If it is, give yourself a break. You know, I go sometimes for a, a day or two in a row without touching anything electronic. I don't do my phone. I don't do anything. Um, and it's beautiful and it's freeing. And I get some of my, I reclaim some of my energy that gets sucked out in screen time. So what are you doing for you? How much is too much for you? You know, I, I had this theory that people are so used to being overstimulated and pushed and information 24 seven all the time, no matter what. And almost like if I'm not always watching something or, or taking something in, I'm going to lose out that that sense of urgency and angst is causing great physical and emotional harm to people. There's such an increase in anxiety and depression. There's such an increase in cardiovascular and digestive issues because our bodies are not meant to live like this. We are meant to live in a harmony of our body and our mind and our being and all of us working together, the cells can't take the constant, the constant just input hitting, 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 hitting all the time. Can't do it. Not over a long period of time. And so I see some of the most bright, gifted, amazing people getting more and more depressed or more and more upset or more and more anxious or even worse, shutting totally down and just being a a shell of their previous self because it's too much. So if you're feeling any of those kinds of ways or you have the decision fatigue at the end of the day or any of this is resonating with you, I want to invite you to begin to tell yourself the truth about the state of affairs within your own being, to tell yourself the truth about what it's going to take to come out of this trance of the belief that we are machines and we have to keep going. We're not human doings. We are human beings. So it's time. It's time that those of us who are intensely sensitive, who have a lot to offer the world, that we wake up enough and we come alive enough from the inside out that we shake off the previous trance and bring our authentic self forward in a way that serves us first and then everyone else. That's my invitation. Pay attention to those things. If you're tired and you keep walking around, you're saying, I'm tired. That's a warning sign. That's a warning sign. Your body, your mind, your soul is saying it's too much. And for every one of us, that too much is going to be a little bit different. But I want to encourage you, strongly encourage you to follow what your inner guidance says, what that inner part of you knows. Because I can tell when I'm pushing too much because I start getting tired and then I start getting a little cranky. But when I'm rested and I'm on point and I'm standing in my sovereignty, I have an abundance of energy because the inner flow of my energy of my inner energy is on point. There's no resistance or static. So pay attention this week. Give yourself a little opportunity to see how that's going and how are you taking care of you first? How are you staving off compassion fatigue and decision fatigue? And what are you doing to take care of the deeper parts of who you are? That's the question. So friends, I hope this episode has served you. And as always, you can email me or contact me, and I'm happy to have more conversation about these topics. So in the meantime, though, put your face to the sun so the shadows fall behind you because you're a rock star. You are here on purpose with a mighty purpose. So go out there, go follow yourself and listen to your heart. Allow yourself to be the beautiful being that you are here to be. Until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, this is Diane saying, be well. Are you tired of searching for someone to understand you? Join our Facebook group, Someone Gets Me. In this group, you will be able to connect with others who are intense, sensitive, smart, and talented. I share my insights and teachings, and you can connect with others 
in a real, authentic, safe forum. So join us today. Someone gets me.